Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to give you guys a couple of updates to the full specifications of N44 as well as N48, which have popped up on the internet, plus also give you kind of a general overview of what we can expect for these RDNA 4 based graphics cards. And also just touch on a few things for Zen 5 as well. But let's begin with actually AMD themselves kind of acknowledging RDNA 4 well in a roundabout way. I'm sure you are aware that patches for upcoming uh, graphics cards and CPUs and so on always kind of rear their head before the actual release of the hardware. And in this particular case, we see this with Rock M. Now, AMD basically have um, essentially uploaded uh, some patches to the Rock M, in this particular case, Rock M Validation Suite. And uh, Kepler L2 has actually managed to discover this on GitHub. There's not a whole lot I'm going to go through with this because essentially it doesn't provide exactly a deep overview of what we can expect for the GPU. All it essentially does is confirm, well, basically AMD acknowledge using these patches anyway, that N48 does exist, which is obviously a pretty good thing. But now I want to move on to the specifications because, well, as I'm sure most of you know, um, there have been a lot of rumors concerning what we can expect from RDNA 4. I've put out several videos myself and all the awats on Twitter has basically provided a pretty in-depth explanation of what we can expect for N48 as well as 44. Just as a quick reminder, N48, of course, will be the more performant of the two. So... Um, essentially what we have here are 32 work group processors. The 256, I am pretty certain, is in reference, of course, to the width of the bus. As for 2770, I believe that that is the clock frequency of the GPU and the actual 240mm square, of course. Well, that's basically just the size of the die. And we can also see N44, which essentially halves pretty much everything. You will possibly raise your eyebrow at the, uh, well, 515. I'm pretty sure that that was just a typo. Obviously, that can happen on Twitter. So it's probably 2,550. 15. So what this basically means is we have 32 workgroup processors um, for the higher end variant and N44 will half this to just 16. The die size though is absolutely titchy for N44 and it's going to be very interesting to see what the prices are for these upcoming graphics cards. Now as for the 64 part it could be a reference to a couple of things. The first of course would be the number of compute units since basically you just simply need to double it versus the work group processor. It could also be the number of ROPs. I don't have a reference to what that is. However, these specifications are pretty similar to ones that I've leaked myself several times. And in that particular case, I was told it was 64 as well as 32. So it's possible that that is the actual cache. It's the infinity cache. However, again, obviously anything can happen with those specifications. It's very possible that I simply got misinformation or maybe the 64 that uh, my source told me was actually in reference not to the infinity cache, but instead the number of... Um What's the word I'm looking for? ROPs. There we go. It's a very difficult uh, acronym. But anyway, yes. So it'll be very interesting to see exactly how these GPUs perform. All the watts a couple of days ago actually provided more details on the performance of these GPUs. And basically speaking, it seems like it's going to be a little bit slower, that is N48, than the flagship, which again does match up with what myself and others have been saying in terms of raster performance. I think ray tracing is going to be significantly better. Obviously, your mileage will vary based upon the game. Perhaps some patches may actually take better advantage of the GPU in some particular instances. And, of course, it will also be very dependent on a plethora of other things. From what I understand, AMD are essentially going to start winding down N31 production, which does make a lot of sense, honestly. Um, to my knowledge, these cards are probably going to be shown at Computex. Now, I did have some people tell me that that is not the case, that we're going to see them next year. In fact, I even said in a recent video that I've had some sources tell me that it's going to be early next year that we see these GPUs. However, what I think is probably likely, and I am certainly not 100% on this, so if I'm wrong, you know, I, I, it just is what it is, because obviously no company wants to exactly be super forthcoming with leaks. 
Um, what I think is probably more likely is next year N40, well, basically RDNA 4 launches for discrete mobile. So I think that that's probably what's happening and discrete desktop is going to be this year. I've heard that it as well as Zen 5 are going to be at Computex, but... Yeah, I mean, Computex is a very logical event. However, it's very possible it could be a bit later. I personally am expecting these GPUs, however, to launch in the second half of this year. I just think it makes logical sense for AMD to do that. It will be super interesting to see what the actual GPUs actually perform like in reality. But for me, it's all about the pricing. Because while I do understand it can be a bit disappointing that the Halo SKUs are, well, you know, not a thing anymore... That isn't a problem to me. It's all about the pricing and also what the power consumption figures and all of that stuff are. Like if AMD can be super aggressive for pricing, the GPUs are performant enough. I mean, for heaven's sake, let's 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 be super pessimistic and say that the performance figures are off and say that it's not let's say 7900 XT or whatever. Let's say that it's about a 7900 GRE on average. Let's be kind of pessimistic or maybe even a bit slower. If it's priced well, that is still more than enough performance for the average user. Like, you know, it's good. Let's put it this way. It's not like a 1080p or a 1440p screen is going to struggle. And I think in most cases, gamers are going to be very happy, even at 4K. So I'll be very interested to see what the marketing is for this. As for the clock frequency, I almost forgot to mention that. It's 27 at 70. I did hear that the frequency is higher, but maybe these are base frequencies or for whatever reason they couldn't achieve it. I did hear that 3 gigahertz plus was the target, but obviously clock frequency is what it is. Maybe they decided to cut down the power consumption figures or something like that. Now, I also promised you guys a few things for Zen 5, did I not? And I am someone who is going to deliver. Um, this is actually courtesy of, um, well, someone else who's managed to make this discovery. Uh, basically, HXL has actually been a goldmine for digging through BIOSes and all of this stuff recently. You should give them a follow on Twitter if you so desire. And basically, you can find a microcode extractor tool um, and I'm sure most of you probably aren't too familiar or really need to use the tool, but what it basically does is provide um, evidence that, uh, well, basically there are two Granite Ridge CPUs mentioned, which seem to be part of the Zen 5 desktop family. I won't read out the entire numbers here because, well, they are... Let's just go with unwieldy, but one ends in E366 and the other is FB20. Now, again, we have seen some um, of the Granite Ridge processors actually starting to appear in shipping manifestos. And I think now that basically they are starting to go to motherboard vendors to basically to start to figure out, OK, what do we need to do for the BIOSes? Hence what we're seeing here. Essentially, what this basically means is companies like Asus, MSI, whoever are starting to receive these processes. I've also heard that Strix Point now is starting to get shared at the very least all of the details, the marketing information with uh, laptop vendors. So I will be very hyped actually to see what AMD announces at CES. Um, sorry, not CES, Computex. I'm like six months late. <laughs> sorry, about, I'm going to be about six months, uh, six months early or late, depending on which way you want to fast forward the clock or forward the clock. Wow, my brain is not working so well today, is it? Anywho, one last thing, actually. I just want to mention this real quick because, um, well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This this, this actually kind of ticked me off, although it's not applicable to me because I don't own a Roku device. But, uh, yeah, it... Um, let's just say it triggered my timbers. I'll leave a link to this, actually, um, because... Well, I, I, I just, I can't believe this, honestly. So, your Roku TV, as the headline uh, begins, may one day show you ads when you pause video on your Apple TV. Now, I'm going to summarize perhaps one of the most interesting parts of this, because they're basically, that is, Roku, are essentially filing a patent. And the pattern is just, well, I mean, I'll, I'll leave you guys to tell me what you think about this, because this actually just... I'm not going to lie, it pissed me off. Um, 
So what it essentially does is it keeps tabs on the video signal coming in through your HDMI port. Now, what this basically means, of course, is that when you plug in a device, let's say an Xbox or whatever, um, that device obviously will send a signal from the Xbox to your TV. And TVs typically do stuff, especially if you have like game mode not enabled, like processing or whatever. And this particular patent though does something a little bit different. So what it essentially is doing is comparing, um, well, basically frames from the video to figure out what is going on. In other words, has much changed between frame A, B, C, D, and so on. So what it will also do is monitor the audio as well. So why is this important? Well, basically, if it figures that you've paused your game for, let's say, X amount of time, it can then start to serve you ads directly. In other words, you've paused the game, that hypothetically, on your Xbox or whatever console, and then it will say, oh, actually, it's been, let's say, two, three minutes. Yeah, now we're going to start to serve you ads. <laughs> um, now, I have to say that that is not just intrusive marketing, but that is just really uncool. Like, I just, I, I really hate crap like that. Um, like, I am a YouTuber, so, you know, ads are a thing. But it's like, people don't expect when they're, like, basically playing a video game and it's been on pause for a couple of minutes that their own TV will monitor the HDMI signal and then start sending ads to that user. And I can also imagine that A, this system is not going to be perfect. So just imagine hypothetically you're like trying to play Call of Duty or whatever game, or let's say you're playing um, like a slow paced RPG or a strategy game and you're like on a screen for quite a while and there's not much happening because you're like, uh, what do I do? Do I go with this particular piece of equipment or do I go with this piece of equipment or I'm waiting for X and Y to happen? Or maybe you're just in the menu because you're trying to do something kind of simple. Maybe you're just trying to like look at all the, the menu options. You're like, oh, do I want to choose this or a character builder, for example? I mean, God, how how often are we in like character builders for several minutes at a time? Like, do I like this? Do I like the look of this? Is it is it really, you know, do I really want this, this, uh, this haircut or this bloody whatever for the next like 5, 10, 20, 50 hours for the game? So I can just imagine that this is going to be a it's just going to really, I, I suspect this is going to be triggered just randomly and it's going to really piss someone off. Like imagine you're playing like Call of Duty, you're lying there and you're like trying to be super quiet and super self stealthy, you're not trying to make any noise and then suddenly an ad showed and then you die. So yeah, that's not going to frustrate people. Anywho, I'm going to leave you all to it. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.